my name is Sarah Rose. Welcome to Severe Weather on Channel 10. Today we will be talking about... El Nino! Let me introduce you to Ella. Ella is a weather reporting intern and a student at the University of Denver. Thank you for the introduction, Sarah. I'm so excited to be here learning all about El Nino. What is El Nino, anyway? We have a guest who can tell us all about it. Hello, my name is Rob. I work for NOAA, which is American Scientific Agency within the U.S. government. Well, let me tell you about El Nino. Slow down, Mr. Dyke. We haven't even introduced you yet. Oh, okay. This is Professor Van Dyke. He works for the U.S. National Center for Atmospheric Research. Well, thank you, Sarah Rose, for having me here today. El Nino is some hot water in the ocean that switches up the pattern of how the weather patterns will move. El Nino is triggered by the same thing that triggers hurricanes. Actually, the true definition of El Nino is an unbearable weather pattern is caused by the warming of the Pacific Ocean near the equator of the coast of South America. This occurs when the normal trade winds and weaken or even reverse, which lets the warm water er, that is usually found in the western Pacific flow to the west instead of to the east. Excuse me, Rob, but El Nino events are large climate disturbances. They occur every three to seven years. They have a huge impact on the continents around the tropical Pacific Ocean. But wait, what makes the El Nino happen? What does it do? A strong El Nino is often associated with flooding rains and warm water in Peru, drought in Indonesia, Africa, and Australia, torrential downpours and mudslides in southern California, a mild winter in the northeast, and fewer hurricanes in the southeast. Keep in mind that these effects aren't guaranteed, but an El Nino makes these conditions more likely to happen. Warm water generally appears off the uh, coast of South America close to Christmas and reaches its peak warmth in the eastern Pacific during the late fall of the following year. After peaking, the waters tend to cool slowly through the winter and spring of the next year. Effects can be found continually around the globe for more than a year, but this is generally not the case in any one place. The weather company issued their January through March 2016 Outlook update. In both forecasts, temperatures and per precipitation have the fingerprints of the current strong El Nino, the strongest in 18 years all over them. Currently, scientists are using many different types of equipment to study and forecast El Ninos. They're using satellites to take pictures from space and beam back information from weather buoys. Weather buoys measure the water, temperature, and airplanes collect and gather data. Thank you, Professor Dyke, for telling us all those interesting things about the technology used to study the El Nino. How do scientists also look at nature and biology to study El Nino. Certain scientists study growth rings on trees to figure out the frequency of El Nino is on the rise. Coral reefs also show clues as to when the water temperature was warmer. Coral will not grow in warmer water. Scientists study coral to see what happens in the past in an attempt to predict the future. Wow, that is amazing. Who could think you could predict what happens in the ocean by looking at trees? Wow, so scientists have been studying El Nino since 1972. It's a fairly new field of study. In studying El Nino, scientists look at how the warming sea surface brings brings changes in the atmosphere, and how winds are changed by atmospheric changes. This is really amazing. Yes, it sure is. Well, well thanks, thanks a lot for tuning into our program on El Nino. Have a great day, folks.